The legend of an underworld, or the inner earth, have abound historical literature and ancient belief systems, with some more serious believers in this theory who, although with nefarious intention, spent considerable funds in the pursuit of the gateway to this realm. Archaeological documentation of its existence is found throughout the ages, seemingly adding validity no matter how hard to believe it persuaded said group's greatest minds into the pursuit of its existence. Within antiquity, specifically Greek, ancient Egyptian belief systems, a gateway to an underworld, was at the time commonly associated with a passageway into hell and the passage through. Representative of these acts include Hades, Osiris, Anubis, etc., with the Greeks even creating necropolises, claiming gateways were often located at the meeting of three rivers. Journey through the underworld. With the Egyptian scripture, we feel not only being the most elaborately constructed, but by that measure the most intriguing to explore. Throughout the underworld journey, the traveler contended with strange beings and gatekeepers, with Osiris found within the Hall of Final Judgment, here the plea of case for entry into the afterlife. The Final Judgment involved a two-part process. Standing before the 42 divine judges, here they stood before 42 divine judges and pleaded their innocence of any wrongdoing during their lifetime. Part 2. The Weighing of the Heart Ceremony The heart, which contained a record of all the deceased's actions in life, was weighed against the feather of the goddess Ma'at. This feather was the symbol for truth and justice, and helped determine whether the deceased person had indeed been virtuous. The Afterlife Known as Life in the Field of Rushes, a reflection of the real world perfected, blue skies, rivers, and boats for travel, gods and goddesses to worship, and fields and crops to be plowed and harvested. The dead were granted a plot of land in the field of rushes and were expected to maintain it. However, other theories arose over the years, these far more commonly connected to the posit of inner earth theory, with portal into the center of our planet, one in which advanced beings dwell. Probably the most famous adventures and eventual retreats who attempted to find this portal within Antarctica. Curiously, now, not only believed by the Americans, but also the Nazis as the location of the portal, reportedly encountered craft of incredibly advanced capabilities. But there were also other attempts, more covert, only partly declassified over the years, showing an intense interest in this same area by the Third Reich, who, while in power during the Second World War, initiating a number of expeditions whose results still remain closely guarded secrets. Many have died or mysteriously vanished without a trace, looking for this elusive portal's validity, now believed to be positioned in one of the most inhospitable geographical locations on Earth. Yet its belief throughout history is undeniable, and as such is a theory which we find highly compelling. Known as the Kola Superdeep Borehole, it was a Soviet engineering project that occurred from the late 1960s to the early 1990s. Going to a depth of 40,000 feet, operations on the site ceased after they reached unbearable heat levels as they predictably got closer and closer to the Earth's superheated molten core. It is known as the deepest hole on Earth and long held the title as the deepest hole humans had ever dug. A test in machinery's capabilities and to see how far into the Earth they could bore before they were inevitably turned away from unbearable heat. Yet, interestingly, Although this borehole is located on a remote peninsula in northern Russia, thus making it a very minimal danger to human life, it was hurriedly sealed up after a fossil was found, reportedly at 40,000 feet deep within our Earth's mantle. 
The drilling operation reportedly went through a layer of ancient plankton, which brought up life forms dated at 2.5 billion years old. The question is, what was this fossil? Why would rumors circle that that is the reason for sealing this borehole? When sealed, even though it presented no real danger to anyone. Why would sites such as Snopes get involved in trying to discredit these claims? There are many things within modern historical understanding, which have been born out of another area of history, which was, unfortunately, built upon an initial faulty foundation this often being timelines and an ignorant lack of awareness of ancient high technology. So if something arises which casts doubt on these areas of teaching, it can have a catastrophic effect on other areas of academia. Thus, this would indeed give motive to cease any such operations and to hastily stonewall, or in this case, seal any access to the location thus covering up any further discoveries. What was found within the Kola Superdeep borehole? We find the possibilities highly compelling. Something which has always puzzled us at Mystery History, although the mountains of pyramids, the gigantic megaliths, indestructible artifacts, or the out-of-place artifacts, is the massive amount of underground cities found all over our planet. Extraordinary undertakings, seemingly necessary at some time in the very distant past, complex tunnel networks almost telepathically hewn direct to each other. Cut from hard bedrocks, with many exhibiting considerable efforts committed into security. Huge rolling doors can be found at many crucial junctions within the underground systems, as can be found, for example, amongst the underground cities of Cappadocia. Derinkuya in particular still exhibits its rolling door still in situ. No one displaying the builder's impressive capabilities, but also the abilities of the rolling stone operators, as whoever built these contraptions unarguably still possessed megalithic stone-moving knowledge. Knowledge we hypothesize is lost knowledge, due to the builders of said sites also a lost civilization which instead of where they have been placed chronologically by funded investigations, actually, we believe, originate an unimaginably longer time ago, placed far within an antiquity not only lost, but actively dismissed. But regardless of the impressive feats these underground cities were to create, the question persists, why? Why go to so much effort? The cities of Uskanakt, Derinkuyu, and Kemakli all found just within Cappadocia, Turkey, are not only some of the most complete underground dwellings, with Derinkuyu estimated to have once been capable of housing 20,000 people. Derinkuyu even connects to Kemakli via an underground tunnel, an astonishing 8 kilometers long. And this is but a tiny fraction of the ancient underground cities, which have so far been found all over the world, with more discovered each day. Many seem to have simply been sealed when no longer needed. Thus, many still lay undisturbed to this day. Derinkuyu, for example, was only rediscovered when a wall was knocked down in a house during renovation work. All seemingly constructed around the same time, yet any definitive motivations for why ancient man decided upon such drastic efforts worldwide have yet to be substantiated. Their construction remains a complete mystery, a fact we find highly intriguing. Many people will argue that these cities were chiseled by slaves over many years and at great suffering, a safe bet narrative which jives with the mainstream. When it comes to the academically claimed ages, and due to the people during said ages substantially lacked any advanced stone-cutting technologies imperative for creating such vast works. This argument, however, thanks to the volumes of examples of exquisite, astounding feats discovered as a special few of these underground complexes, not only installed clearly to demonstrate an acoustic level of awareness on par with prodigal ability and possibly many other as yet undeciphered features displaying excelled understanding of many of life's most intriguing subjects. The Hypogeum, located within modern-day Malta, 
is but one of many examples which can be presented as proof that whoever built these underground layers at minimum possessed astonishing acoustic knowledge, far ahead of man, as well as almost physics-defying stone-moving techniques displayed in the structure itself. The hypogeum possesses a characteristic designed into its construction, which is simply astonishing. It is so mystifying that although very little is known regarding how it was achieved, a certain frequency it can amplify which seems to stimulate the building's amplifying capabilities, as if the entire structure resonates and has since been shown to also affect the human brain, becoming known as the God frequency. Who built these underground labyrinths? Why? When did they build them? We find these incredible relics of a lost civilization highly compelling.